What's up everybody, it's the RCL man here. Welcome to another tutorial video here in Rec Room. Today you're going to learn all about Circuits V2 and how you can start using it. Obviously I cannot cover everything that Circuits V2 has because there is so much in there. But I'll at least give you a good baseline to get started with. Um, how you can start using it. You'll learn about events. You'll learn about uh, different types of values and uh, different variables that you can use. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started, shall we? All right, so the first thing you want to do to get started with Circuits V2 is you have to enable the beta creative tool. So the way you do that is you're going to go into your watch here. You're going to go to this room, settings, general setup, and then check this box, allow creative beta content. I think it's on the, yeah, it's on the second page. So check that box. A little thing will pop up that'll ask you to like agree to, to certain things. Just hit okay on that. Um, and then yeah, just make sure that that's checked, okay? Now when you have that check and you pull up your maker pen, go to open palette, you will have circuits V2 up here, all right? Um, so let's start out with um, events because that's kind of how most things work or how, how you get things to start moving here. Okay, so we're gonna actually start out with the event receiver. I think this is the easiest way that you can start understanding what's going on. So let's configure this event receiver, configure it and set it to, now you can get this event receiver to, to I guess, receive a signal um, when a room is started or when a player has spawned, when a game starts, when it ends. What we're gonna do is we're gonna set it to test event because this gives you more control where you can actually test it at will or get a signal to come out whenever you want so we have it set to test event whenever you hit send test event it'll send a signal through this tab i guess is what we're going to call it right and just to show you that it is working we're going to use the new um uh ai spawner or object spawner whatever you want to call it spawner gadget here we go all right whoops there we go there we go all right now with this spawner gadget it's got a lot of tabs on it. I'm not sure what, what to call these, but it's got a lot of these. Right now, we're just going to ignore all of them. Um, let's see, all we need to do is hook it up. So wire this to start. Also, if you want to unhook something, all you have to do is click one of them one time. That's it. But, so we'll click it up to the, we'll hook it up to start. Um, we have the amount of enemies we want to spawn. One, you know, seconds between, doesn't matter. Basically, all of that doesn't matter, just, just to start it and to spawn one enemy. And then to get it to work, we actually have to configure the ring here to spawn something so let's just make it spawn a flying range bot how about that so now just to kind of prove that this is working hit circuits v2 when i hit send test event it'll send a signal through here and tell it to start and it'll spawn one enemy there we go and right now there's no uh, nav mesh present so it'll just kind of do that for a second and then it'll disappear but to illustrate to you how events kind of work, I'm going to make a new event. Um, let's see here. Let's go new event chip. Let's pull this out here. New event four is what it's called. So what we need is we need an event uh, sender and we need another event receiver. So what we're going to do is get, let's see, event sender. Okay. And then an event receiver. All right. <clears throat> so let's unhook this. Now this is the event receiver for that test signal, right? The, the test event. So we're gonna hook this up to the event sender and we're gonna configure the event sender to send out, I guess, a, a signal for the new event four, which was just made. So let's go new event four. Now, whenever I hit the test signal, the test sender basically, test event, it will send out a signal and basically activate any other receiver that has that has been configured to new event four, which we're going to do to this one. So let's configure this. Whoops. Yeah, let's configure that one to new event four. All right. And then what we're going to do just to prove that it works is we're going to hook up the new receiver for new event and hook it up to the start over here. So basically, like I said, you're going to send out a test signal. It's going to go to the sender, which is going to send out a call for new event four, which is then going to activate this receiver for new event four. And then it's going to activate the, uh, the spawner gadget. All right. So let's go ahead and test it out. There we go. All right. So, so that's kind of how they work. I'm going to do one more thing here just to kind of illustrate it to you. Um, we're going to make something. I'll be right back. 
So this is a small bit of circuitry here that I have that's just going to ask me a math question, okay? But I've blocked out all of the other circuitry just to kind of illustrate how the events work again. Um, so let me just go through it real quick before we show it to you. Uh, the test event is going to go through here. It's going to activate the event sender for math question. That means that it's going to activate any event receiver for math question, which this is the only one. So. It's going to go through the event receiver for math question. It'll run through all of this stuff going on back here, which we'll go through in, in a minute. Okay. Um, and then, depending on whether I got the answer correct or wrong, um, let's see. It'll either activate this event sender for the correct event, or it will activate the event sender for the incorrect event. And I have it over here. The correct event receiver is here. It will work some, some stuff over here, and you'll see some things. Um, and then incorrect... It'll, it'll activate this, it'll go through here, and then uh, it will, so I have it set to where it'll basically restart if I get it incorrect. If I get it incorrect, it'll go through here, and then it will do another event sender back to uh, the math question, essentially. So it'll restart if I get it wrong. Let's go ahead and test it, and I'll go through it while it's, while it's happening, okay? So, let's do test event. All right, so show notification. What is one plus one? Now, just to illustrate, I'm going to make it five. I'm just going to hit five, you know, just to show you. So five. Oh, actually, let me let me go through this. So I hit the test event. It went through, and it activated the sender for math question. This activated the math question receiver. Went through the logic. Right now, we're sitting here in the middle of the blue box waiting for an answer. All right. Now, if I if I put in the incorrect answer, it will activate this. If I put in the correct answer, it will activate this. Since it is incorrect, let's just hit OK. And it says incorrect. Try again. And when I do that, it again it goes here to the incorrect, and then it goes here to event sender, math question, math question, and then it starts over again. So now we're going to do the correct answer, which won't do much. It'll just it'll activate this. It'll activate that, and then it'll it'll end the loop essentially. So let's do two. There we go. All right, correct, and then that's it. All right, so now we're gonna kind of see what's going on behind the scenes here. All right, let's move this. Okay, so this is all the logic that I have going on uh, for that math question. Okay, so let's start at the beginning again. Um, we have the test event that signal runs to math question that sends it out. It's received by the math question math question receiver. Okay, and then that goes into here into the local player or prompt local player rather. That's what makes it pop up on my watch as a notification. Um, and I'm going to stop here to explain what the different colors are because all of these have different colors. Even the uh, the the spawner gadget has different colors here. So all the values that you can put through all these chips, there's different kinds. Um, these are what's known as strings, all of the purple ones. Strings are um, text. They're basically, like, you can't use them in math or anything. It's, it's, you can use uh, letters in it and stuff like that. It's, it's more of just things for you to read and stuff like that. Um, and then we have blue, which I believe is the floats. Okay, floats are decimals. So right now we just have it set as two or we have it set as whole numbers, but you can use decimals as floats. Now integers, like the green ones here, um, like amount of enemies to spawn, they can only be whole numbers. You can't spawn 1.5 enemies, you know what I mean? So it, it can only be one, two, three, it can only be whole numbers. And then let's see, the pink ones are Boolean, so either true or false, and then the uh, yellow ones are going to be either enemies or uh, players, I believe. Although I don't quite know how to use those yet. Um, but anyway, I, I just want to kind of explain what those are because they do matter. You can only hook up, um, you can only hook up purples to purples, blues to blues, oranges to oranges. Like they, they have to match. Um, now there is an exception. If I go here and I unhook this. If it's gray, like this one, grays can be hooked up to, I think, purples, blues, greens. They can be hooked up to a lot of different ones. I don't think they can get booleans or, or, or signals. But um, anyway, let's hook that back up here. So this step here was kind of unnecessary, but I just wanted to get another type in here, basically. So what I did here was you take the string, right? 
that, that you're given. The response that you give is a string as well. So what it's doing here is it's sending the signal in. It's waiting for a response right here. Once it gets the response, I have it going into parse float. So what this does is it changes the response into a number, essentially. Something you can do math with, in a way. Um, let's see. And then right here, I have it comparing. Is the number that was sent through equal to 2? If it's equal to 2, then it would be 1 plus 1, right? If it's not, then, well, that's what this is for. But anyway... Once it gets an answer of whether this is true or true or false, this right here is a boolean, so it's false or true. Let's turn it back to false. So once it gets an answer on whether this is true or false, then it will send it in here. Okay. So then this signal comes through and it says, "Hey, if this is true, then send out this signal, which is to the correct." So if it is true that the answer you put in is two, then go to the correct. And if it is not true, or else, if it's anything other than true, um, then you go to the incorrect, which then goes over here. If it's correct, it goes through the correct event receiver, right? And then it goes here to show notification. That's how you get the text to pop up right here at the bottom of the screen. Um, and it just says, you can, you, it, the string again, and you could just say, hey, correct. Or if it was incorrect, it would come over here to the event uh, receiver. And I have it displaying uh, incorrect, try again. And then I have a delay here because you just have to have a delay. You can't run um, like notifications on your watch over and over again. You just have to have a delay in between. Um, but anyway, so, so the delay is there. And then it activates the math question event again. So then it starts all of this over again. Well, I hope that gives you kind of an idea of what's going on here to start with circuits. There's one more thing I want to say about events, just so that you understand what's going on with them. Um, let's get an event receiver going here. We need an event sender, and we need a new event. Alright. So the last thing you kind of need to understand about these events is that they have ports that can go with them. So if I configure this event here, you can add a property. So let's add a property and let's add a integer. Okay. And it's called port. All right. So now you see this port here. It's a green port. It's, it's on there. We're going to add one more just to show you that it can be different. So let's add a string. Okay. And we got to modify the title. Let's do port two. Okay. So now it has two ports. It's got the green integer one and, uh, and then the purple string one, right? Now, if we want to get access to these ports, what we do is we configure the event sender to new event five. Okay, now when we send the signal off for the new event five receiver, it will not only send a signal for basically the orange tab to be activated, but it will also activate, oops, oh, sorry, the wrong one. New event five. Okay. But it will also activate these other ports. So basically the event is, is a, is a, a chip itself that you can add ports to and subtract ports or you can add ports to and then call. So for instance, if I had something plugged in here that changed this to, so for instance, if I change this into, you know, let's just say five. Okay. And then we change this into uh, hi. Okay. Now, when I hook these up to something else, it will output those numbers. So it's another way to do this without having to connect. It's another way to send information through events, like like we talked about earlier. Okay. So now that we got all that out of the way, we've got one more thing to look at, and it's variables. Okay. So let's do most of these all work the same. I'm just going to use one to kind of give you an idea of what's going on. Let's do um, instance integer. Okay. So this is just a integer. It's some value that we want to hold or that we want to change. So let's say, let's just call it a, all right. So we're going to configure it, change the name. It is integer a. Right, an integer a can be used in, in many many different things, but integer a can also change. Um, basically, what you have to do is set this. Once you define what this value is, then you have to set the value. So let's go to what is set value? There we go. Set value. 
All right, now this is one of those ones with the gray ports, okay? Gray ports, they can be used for strings and integers and floats and, and everything. All right, so what you're going to do is you want variable A to be changed. And what value do you want variable A to be? So let's just say we want it to be 5, okay? And then if we send a test signal basically through here by some process, it will set the value of a to five integer a will now be five but what we can do is we can clone it and we can actually like i said it can change so if we want to hook this up here and let's say yeah let's just leave that zero so now depending on which one of these gets the go signal which one of these gets the signal essentially if this one gets the signal then a will be set to five but if this one gets the signal, the A will be set to zero. It's basically like if I got the math, I could set it to where if I got the math question right, then the value of A would be five. Or if I got it wrong, it would be zero. Um, that's kind of how it works. You can't really, like I, I thought, what if you, you know, have it hooked up twice? You can't really do that. It doesn't work. Um, unless there's some other way that then I'm not sure but that's kind of how variables work. I hope that was a good explanation. If you have questions, make sure to put them in the comments, okay? All right, everybody. Well, hopefully you learned how to use Circuits V2 now. Hopefully you have a good baseline understanding there. If you did like the video, make sure to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you have any questions, make sure to put them in the comments. Have a good day, everybody. RCO Man, out.